Supreme Court has spoken on the president's so-called travel ban. So what comes next? Joining me now is Democratic Senator Maisie Hirono. She's the senior senator from Hawaii. That is the state that brought the lawsuit on the president's travel order that resulted in today's developments. Uh, senator, thank you for joining us. Uh, I know, and we played some of your uh, 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 clips of what you were saying earlier today. I know you're critical of this ruling. One thing you said that jumped out at me, you liken the decision by the Supreme Court today to an infamous decision by the Supreme Court back in 1994 uh, that authorized the internment of Japanese Americans uh, during the Second World War. Um, in making that comparison, do you think that is where this could end up? Do you think that the Supreme Court has given this president or any president the power to do something similar with Muslims? That's my fear. And in fact, uh, the court said under the Immigration and uh, Nationality Act that, Mr. President, you can just do pretty much whatever you want, just so long as you deem it to be in the interest of uh, national security and uh, you don't have uh, overt uh, things like this is a Muslim ban. Although he was so overt about it throughout the campaign and even after that, he wanted to prevent Muslims from coming to this country. And the court said, we're not going to consider all of that. Whereas, of of course, the dissent, a very strong dissent by uh, Justice Sotomayor said, to the contrary, this is very much like the Korematsu decision where the government came in and said the president justified his actions by saying this is for national security. I think it's quite reminiscent. And I say, who's next? Is he going to ban Mexicans from coming to our country, uh, people from Guatemala, people from Honduras? I think the president is feeling pretty powerful right now, and we hardly need to give him more power, more power to our president who does not limit himself to the rule of law or due process or anything much else that promotes democracy in our country. Well, let me ask you, because it, it, the ruling from the court here, and John Roberts in the opinion, he says, I'll read from it, the proclamation, meaning the travel ban, the proclamation is squarely within the scope of presidential authority. So the argument that the majority on the court was making here was they would take no position on Trump's motivation for it, just saying that he was exercising legitimate presidential authority under the law. Is there a thought on your part in response as a lawmaker to change the law? Pretty much the court said, if you don't like our interpretation of how, uh, why the latitude is to the president under the appropriate act, then you, members of Congress, can change that. As though we have an environment where this Congress is going to do anything positive regarding immigration. So I say this is a dark day for our country, for anybody who cares about checks and balances, because notice that the person who gave the Supreme Court the fifth vote on this was none other than Neil Gorsuch. And if you looked at the tweet that uh, Mitch McConnell sent out, it was of him shaking hands with Neil Gorsuch. So by preventing uh, Merrick Garland from even getting a hearing and putting Neil Gorsuch on the court, that is the fifth vote, not only for this uh, decision, which I think history will deem was an error, but uh, probably another decision that will be uh, come down the pike tomorrow relating to uh, public sector unions. But, so but, Neil Gorsuch will probably give uh, the court the fifth vote but, on that decision also. But let me let me just stay on this, though, because I'm trying to understand your interpretation of your view of presidential power as it relates to this case. If we took a future president, it's not Donald Trump. I don't know if it's a Republican. I don't know if it's a Democrat. I don't know anything about this future president. But if a future president asserted that I, as the president, have the power to make a determination that the following three or four countries have absolutely, you know, unacceptable vetting procedures, uh, and therefore, until those vetting procedures are addressed, I'm not going to allow entries to the United States from those countries. Would that future president, do you think that future president has that power? The error of this court's decision was that they did not take into consideration the true motives for this uh, iteration of the Muslim ban and the true motive being a Muslim ban. And so you can code it any way you want. You can try to, to sugarcoat it, I should say, by saying, well, this is actually for some other reasons. So the court's saying that whatever the president says it, to justify what he's uh, doing has no impact on the decision at all. So that is a very broad, broad reading of uh, the powers that the president has to do whatever the heck he wants under the rubric of national security. And what I would say 
way that the, the uh, dissenters looked at, which was the, the totality of the comments and the statements that, that can lead one to conclude that uh, the real <laughs> desire was for a Muslim ban, which should be unconstitutional as uh, being based on religion. Do, do you think there's, in, in the uh, argument you're making, though, the idea of, hey, look, yeah, he said this as a candidate, he said this on the campaign trail, let's match this up with the action he tried to take as president and see if we can, we can see clearly what the, what the true motivation was there. Is, is there any kind of slippery slope potential, though, in, in that sort of thing? Where if, 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 on a different issue, not necessarily immigration, not necessarily a travel ban, where if you try, try to match up what a, president, a presidential candidate says on the trail with what they do, are, are, are you getting into an area there where you're trying to discern motive? I think it's really important to, to discern the, it's not just motives that, that we're just making up. It's actually explanations as to uh, his actions that the president himself came out of his own mouth. So when we totally ignore that, I think that we are getting into the realm of a slippery slope. And in fact, uh, the, the slippery slope with this decision is that the president can target some other group, some other country next, and say, this is for national security reasons that I'm doing this. So there's a slippery slope, uh, you know, in just about any case that you can think of. But in this case, where the presidential power is basically unfettered, I think that creates more of a dangerous slippery slope than them saying, wait a minute, Mr. President, you said all these things that, that you wanted to impose a Muslim ban, and this is not constitutional. We are not going to allow you to do that. That would have been a much better ruling, in my opinion, that would have set some parameters so that we don't get on a slippery slope. This decision creates the opening for the very kind of slippery slope that you're probably referring to, Steve. All right, Senator Maisie Hirono, Democrat from Hawaii, thank you. And a